Good morning everybody, it's 10 a.m. and it's time once again for GSC at Home, your daily slice of science coming to your house live from Glasgow Science Centre. And today, me, CJ, your science communicator, I'm going to go over Newton's three laws of motion. You may have heard of Sir Isaac Newton as the gentleman who helped discover the concept of gravity. An apple fell on his head and he just had this idea that things fall to the ground. Gravity exists which is pretty cool. But he's also called the grandfather of physics. And one of the things that he did to probably get him called the grandfather of physics is he came up with three laws of motion. Three laws that let us work out why and how things move throughout our planet. And he was a very creative man, so he named his three laws of motion Newton's three laws of motion. We are gonna start off with Newton's first law of motion today, which is quite a wordy one, so I'm gonna go through it as fast as I can. An object will not move unless acting upon by a force. Once moving, an object will keep moving in a straight line at the same speed forever unless acting upon by another force. Did you catch that one? If you didn't catch that one, we're gonna break it down bit by bit for you to understand. And for us to be able to do that, we're gonna to have to bring a member of the science show team that we've not shown off at GSC at home today, and that is our stunt tennis ball. Give our stunt tennis ball a little wave. Now he's not gonna wave back because he is a stunt tennis ball, but he is gonna help us work out Newton's first law. So, let's break it down a little bit. The first part of Newton's law is an object will not move unless acted upon by another force. So, the tennis ball will not move as long as there's not a force acting upon it. So if I don't act the force upon this tennis ball, it's not gonna move. I'm gonna show you that in three, two, one. No force, no movement. Now let's get to the second part of this law. An object will keep moving in a straight line at the same speed forever. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give our tennis ball a little bit of a hit. When I give this tennis ball a little bit of a hit, it's gonna go on its dangerous journey. And in its dangerous journey, it's gonna carry on in a straight line at the same speed forever. And as you might see, it's heading towards the camera. And once it goes beyond the camera, well, it's gonna go through the camera, it's gonna go through your screens, and then, well, it's gonna end up in your homes, and it's gonna be quite a disaster, isn't it? Is that what's gonna happen? Well, let's do an experiment and find out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our stunt tennis ball right here. We're gonna give our stunt tennis ball a little bit of a smack. And three, and two, and one. Hmm. It's not exactly what we planned out there, was it? That's not exactly what we thought was gonna happen. But if we have a look at the rest of the law, unless acted upon by another force. So if there were no other forces acting upon our tennis ball, then yes, it would have carried on that way forever. However, we have some forces acting upon our tennis ball. One of them is gravity. Gravity, that force that Sir Isaac Newton worked out and sort of discovered himself, is pulling the tennis ball to the ground. So that's gonna slow it down. The other force as well is, is friction as well. You remember the hammer and feather experiment that you might have seen earlier on in another video? That was telling you all about air particles around us that slow things down as they travel through the air. Our tennis ball is being slowed down and dragged down by gravity and friction until it eventually hits the ground. Now, that is Newton's first law of motion. So we're gonna carry on with Newton's second law of motion. And Newton's second law of motion is a little bit different. It's actually maths, but it's not any kind of maths. No, it's maths with letters. It's algebra. And you know, maths can only be made more fun when you add letters to it. Now, the algebraic equation that we have is something that we call force equals mass times acceleration. So what we can use that for is to work out either how fast something moves, how powerful it moves, or indeed, how big it is. We can actually play around with these concepts in this equation to have a lot of fun with some rockets. So I've got a rocket right here. And this rocket today is gonna be our mass. And what I want to do is, I want to accelerate this mass all the way over to the other side of the theater. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna place this rocket on our rocket launcher. And there we go. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of force to it. I'm gonna use one foot to apply a little bit of force to it. And let's see where it goes. It went right into the first row. It went a little bit far, but I want it to travel further. So one thing we can do is we can add a whole lot more force. So what I'm gonna do instead is, I am going to put two feet onto the launcher instead of one. And that should hopefully make the rocket go a little bit further. So here we go, we're gonna launch in three, two, one. 
And there we go, it went all the way across to the other side of the stage. Now I want this rocket to go even further, but I've used one foot and I've used two feet. I don't have three feet to use. I can't use an extra foot to get me more force. So I'm gonna have to change something else. What we're trying to do is make it accelerate. So if we can't change the force and we're working out the acceleration, we're gonna have to change the mass. We're gonna make the mass of the rocket a little bit smaller and this rocket, well, it's gonna fly. I'm gonna pop this rocket here. Now I'm gonna pop this other rocket on the launcher. We're gonna go two footed once again and we're gonna let it go in three, two, one. And wow, that nearly hit the roof there. You're gonna have to take my word for it, but that nearly hit the roof. And using that, we can see that with the equation, if we change different properties of the equation, we get different results. We changed the force, we made it fly further. We changed the mass, we made it fly further. Now, when I do an experiment involving rockets and explosions and making things fly, well, I don't wanna just use some air to push our rocket, no. I'm gonna use some fire. And today, to use our fire, we're gonna use something very, very special. It's actually been on stage the entire time that we've been here. And it is this, the Glasgow Science Center cannon. And this Glasgow Science Center cannon is gonna launch a cannonball from this end of the stage to knock that wall down there. Somebody decided to build a barbecue pit at Glasgow Science Center. And you know what? I think it's a bit of an eyesore. So we're gonna take it down. Now, what we're gonna need first is we are going to need a cannonball. And I think actually we're gonna use the yellow round one. And what we do is we load the cannon up like this. Make sure that it's in nice and securely. Fantastic. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna need something to explode. We're gonna need something to force this cannonball all the way to the wall. So what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use brute deodorant for men. So you could say that we're using brute force. And of course, this is an explosion, and explosions can be incredibly unsafe. So we're gonna need some personal protective equipment. I'm gonna need some safety glasses, you know, because explosions can cause bits to go everywhere. And I'm gonna need some ear defenders as well. I've got my ear defenders right here. If you all take a look under your seats, you'll find absolutely nothing, because you're all at home, so you don't have to worry about that. It's a little joke that we usually do in the theater. Now what I've got here is I've got the other end of the cannon, very important part of the cannon, you don't want that to be open when you're firing off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some brute deodorant to the cannon. There we go, that's a good bit of fuel. Then we're gonna close this one off. Now, this might take a few attempts because the cannon's very temperamental. I think we might get there. So, force equals mass times acceleration. The force will be the explosion. The mass will be the cannonball. And we're gonna accelerate it all the way to that wall. So let's let this go in. Three, two, one. Oh no. Like I said, temperamental. But don't worry, you can give it a little shake. Sometimes you just gotta give it a little bit of a shake. A little bit of a sciencey sugar. There we go, let's try it again. In three, two, one. Ooh, still not watching. That's that's getting quite awkward. Alright, what we'll do is we'll apply some more fuel. Because surely more fuel will make it go. A little bit more there. Gonna be smelling fresh right now. We put the lid back on once again. Let's see. And three, two, one. Oh no! This is making things quite awkward for us. But fortunately, we've got one more trick up our sleeve. We're just gonna treat it like it's your old Nintendo at home. We're just gonna blow on it. You know, hopefully that will make it work. There we go, pop the lid back on the cannon, and three, two, one. No, nah, it's not gonna work. Okay, everybody, so unfortunately, 
sometimes life science doesn't go according to plan. But don't you worry, I'm pretty sure we're going to be launching something else later on. So don't you worry about that one. And we'll go on to Newton's third law. Now Newton's third law is, is foolproof, right? This one, nothing's going to go wrong with this one. Don't worry about that cannon. Because what we're going to talk about is, we're going to talk about Newton's third law, which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If you're not sure what that means, what you might want to do is take a seat on your sofa, take a seat on your couch, and what you're going to do is take your arms and push down on your chair. As you push down on your chair, you'll notice that your body starts to go up. You're lifting your body up. And that's the principle of it right there. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The action is pushing down on the chair, and the reaction is your body going up. But the best way to show this off, and easily the most fun way to show this off, is with one of these. A lovely rocket balloon. Now, this balloon is of course full of air. I'm pretty sure you all know that. And when I let go of this balloon, I think you know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to shoot all over the place. It's going to go in all sorts of different directions. But initially, what's going to happen is I let go of this balloon and the air starts to rush down this way. It starts to rush out of the balloon. But as it's rushing down this way, it's also pushing the balloon up that way. Our action is the air going down this way, and our reaction is the balloon shooting all over the place. And with that, we've come to the end of Newton's Steel Laws. So, thank you so much for joining us at GSC at home. Hope you have a wonderful day, stay safe, and keep enjoying our live science demonstrations. But anyway, for this one today, we're going to let this balloon go and show you Newton's third law. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining us.